So I just finished Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief last week and the story and the plot's been dangling in my mind and I just keep thinking, is it better than Harry Potter? Let's talk about it, but first let's go on a quick coffee run because that's what we do on this channel. I don't usually go for coffee after 6 p.m., but I feel like breaking the rules today, so. Oh, look. Gas is cheap. Just an aside, this podcast with Simu Liu and Anna Ferris is just brilliant. Like, I've been listening to it, and I just moved it back so I can show you where it starts from. But it's amazing. Check it out. Lovely episode. So it took me a while to find an empty parking lot, but I guess we're here. So... Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief is one of my favorite origin stories ever told. It has heart, it's funny, it's witty, and it has a ton of charm. But I really wanted to compare it to Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone because I think Sorcerer's Stone is one of the best origin stories ever told, and I think Lightning Thief comes very close to it. For, so for this comparison, we're gonna go down four scales. We're gonna go down writing style, content, engagement, and then legacy. Just a fair warning beforehand, I understand this is kind of like a points-based system, but there aren't any losers because both of those books are fantastic and if anything, we win in either way. So for writing style, right off the bat, the two stories are, to are told from two very different perspectives. The first one, which is Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief, is first person. And for Percy Jackson, it really works. We really get a feel of who Percy is and where he comes from and what's going on in his inner thoughts and his inner monologue and his ramblings. Lots and lots of inner monologues, which could be a good thing and it can also be annoying when it's the 12-year-old complaining about being Poseidon's son, if you know what I mean. So I get it. I get that he's 12 years old. And when I read it the first time around, I, I'm pretty sure I related to a lot of it. But now in my mid-20s, I'm kind of like, okay, we get the point, keep going. Now this is where Harry Potter is a better read because it's written in third person omniscient voice, which means that the author, the narrator knows everything that they're about to tell you. They're just withholding information so they get to tell you in a orderly manner. And that really makes you feel comfortable in the writing. That really makes you trust the writer. It really elevates the storytelling and escapes the 12 year old POV perspective. Third person POV also lets us dive into a bunch of different characters like we get chapters from the perspective of Snape and Ron and even Voldemort which also allows us to have one of the best openings of all time in the first chapter of the Sorcerer's Stone called The Boy Who Lived. It's such a scene setter and I think there's a lake nearby so let's just check that out. This next section we have to talk about is content and I think for content Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone kind of falls short a little bit. Not to say that HP1 is bad, it just takes a bit of a time for it to get along now, doesn't it? On the other hand, Percy Jackson kind of just starts with action, with Mrs. Dodds just blowing herself up on a field trip, and you find out this really weird things are happening with Percy, and we're kind of hooked literally from the first chapter. Looks like something where uh, Shrek would be really happy to live, you know? Not a lot going on, still water scares the shit out of me. <laughs> Let's go there and talk. I didn't realize how far the bench actually was. This is a long walk. And I just realized that I forgot my keys in my car, so I'm really hoping when I get back there, the car is still there, or else this, would, this is gonna turn out to be a very different video. <laughs> all right, we're finally here, and we walked all the way from there for this video. I don't know why we did that, but here we are. The third thing is engagement. And now engagement is a purely subjective, personal opinion of mine. There's not really a way to scale it except for enjoyment. Now, both novels are extremely engaging. That's why they're super successful. But I do think engagement-wise, Harry Potter is a little bit more enjoyable. Harry Potter just had me glued a little bit more. I sincerely believe it has everything to do with the POVs, the way that the story is told. Percy's POV just gets a bit annoying sometimes. And because JK Rowling has the ability to change directions and sort of tell the story from different perspectives, it just keeps it fresh. I guess reading third person is just a bit more enjoyable for me. So in a brilliant turn of events, I have now realized that the audio from this portion of the video is completely gone. So what I've done is recorded some sections on my voice memo 
letting you know what I was talking about. The fourth and final part was basically legacy. And legacy is very important for this situation because the legacy of Harry Potter is cemented in eternity as one of the best children's fantasy collection ever put together. So that's something Percy Jackson does not have yet. Harry Potter had one of the best runs in movies in a very long time. It had it made eight movies, made over four or five billion dollars, three successful prequels, one successful play, theme parks, all of that good stuff that Percy Jackson just couldn't really do. Percy Jackson started off not on the best foot with the movies and it kind of faltered from that, but I feel like it's having a resurgence right now with Disney Plus picking it up and announcing a cast that's actually age appropriate, even if it's not ethnically appropriate. But, you know, that's a conversation for a different day. I think Percy Jackson could lead the next 10 years of fantasy if it, it is done right. Okay, it started to rain, so we're going to finish this video in the car. That's it for me today, guys. If you guys have anything contentious to say, if you guys disagree with anything I said, Check out the comment section, it's all yours. Welcome back to Voice Memos with Nazar. This is just the end of the video where I talk about how if you want to support my channel, if you want to help me become a better YouTuber, like and subscribe. If you want to help the content even more, consider signing up to my Patreon so I can buy a new mic. Because clearly the microphone on my camera right now sucks. And with that positivity, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys stick around for more. And I hope you guys share it with your friends. If you guys have anything else to say, leave it in the comments. I usually reply to everything that I see. So let's have a conversation down there. See you guys in the next video. Cheers.